Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel, and welcome to the first episode of our new press test series where we use a 100 ton Ram, 2,000 foot pound Milwaukee one inch drive D handle, or both, to test really anything you guys want C clamps, automotive pullers, or in today's case, and for the next couple PT episodes, ball joint presses. With plenty of data along the way in the form of hardness testing, weight, measuring deflection, and the almighty power figures. If we were to test all of the brands of ball joint pullers that we know of, this video would have been longer than a CSI episode, so suggest a ball joint brand that you've had luck with in the comments and we'll put some of your top suggestions in our episode number two. Today for our debut episode, we're going to test what are likely the best selling ball joint puller sets in the US. The first example being from Harbor Freight, donning their pricier Maddox name, model MA10-1, their previous Pittsburgh set was famously garbage and would bend if you look too hard at it, so we're interested in how this pricier option from the store holds up. At $90 and most of their coupons being kaput, it's legitimately one of the pricier options on the market. What is very much not a pricey option is our other ball joint set headed for death row, the Orion Mototech 854203536, which goes for $47. This is the best selling ball joint press on Amazon, and not only that, the second best selling ball joint kit is also Orion Mototech, just in a blue case, and the third is the same but in a black case, and even the fourth best selling is Orion but in their master set orientation. And every one of them is a picture of a 3D rendering of the product instead of an actual picture. They seem a bit bashful to show what they're getting, but they are getting a whole lot of sales. As a matter of fact, seven of the top ten products in this category are all OMT. Our red case version looks decent enough, a little chipped up, and not as nice as the Maddox, but they must sell as many as they do for a reason, right? The reviews of these are overall pretty positive, so are those just DIY guys using it once on a newer vehicle that isn't going to take a lot of force, or people who actually give these the beans? Today we're going to find out, and we'll be finding out with the help of our new 2868-20 Milwaukee 1-inch D handle which advertises a cool 2,000 foot-pounds of ball joint busting torque. On this channel's next video, you'll be finding out just how much this guy can make on our dyno using the battery its HD kit comes with, but for today, let's just say it's probably enough to push these presses to their limits. Another ally in our fight to punish these presses is the FPY-1001 100 metric ton hydraulic ram we picked up. If 220,000 pounds of force isn't high enough to register these tools limits, then we're calling it quits on this whole YouTube thing. But this won't be doing the heavy lifting as much as it will really just be registering it. I'll show you what I mean. It's going to be mounted to this angle iron, which is then clamped by the vise to sort of support it. The ram gets bolted onto here, filled up with hydraulic fluid, then we expose the ram face a few millimeters by using a hydraulic pump. Then we slap one of our custom unit conversion gauges onto it, one of the pricey ones our dyno uses. Then with some simple math, by measuring the cylinder bore of the ram, Then taking that measurement and converting it into piston face area, you're able to enter that into a calculator along with the max 10k PSI this RAM is rated for and see the 100 metric tons to confirm we're measuring something correctly. With that same process, you're then able to determine what one PSI should look like, and that equals 22.1805 pounds on our setup. We then enter this into the gauge and set it up for pounds. So it's going to spit out pounds on this gauge when we abuse it. In this case, we're limited to how many units we could put in front of the decimal point. So it's set up for 2.218 instead of 22. You still with me? Basically, we add a zero at the end of whatever this gauge says, and it should be pretty spot on. Here's an example. With a hand C-clamp, which we can also test a failure for you guys if you want, we can max it out by hand and get 85 from the gauge, which means 850 pounds of clamping force. You may be wondering, with the ram and the gauge, why not just pump up this thing until a press splits in half and then you have your number? Well, we want to know how much you would generate at home 
in force with an impact wrench or by hand if you need to. To do that, these need to be tested with the force screw installed by impacting on the force screw like you would be at home or at work. It's not a lot of use if the press is good to 50,000 pounds of force, but the bolt bends, strips, or breaks off at only 10,000 pounds. This process has the added benefit of controlling for the press bending. We'll be measuring how well the tool takes impacts from this end and turns it into ball joint busting power on this end. Any input here that's instead wasted on turning the press into a pretzel won't be registered here. If the gauge starts to drop rather than climb, all of your impact effort is either being squandered by the force bolt killing itself or the press material yielding. Having a beefy tool that's not easily ruined is good and all, but if getting a ball joint out is the goal of these tools, we want to measure how much output it's creating given a certain amount of input. A tool that flexes might come back to shape when you're done, but ultimately not super useful by wasting those input torques. So that we're not just going full Rambo mode on these tools and destroying them within the first couple seconds, which you would probably not be doing at home and not be able to relate to, we'll be punishing these with increasing levels of power. Here's what that looks like. Using an XC 6.0 for weight reasons, because we're testing this all day, and to limit power for now, here's what setting one looks like on this tool. That's 257, or roughly the equivalent of a rigid mid-torque and what it can generate in this five second test. Setting two is only about 297, so we'll be skipping that in our testing as it's too close. Here's setting three. Four hundred and sixty nine, or about an IR twenty two thirty five TI max worth, or a Cobalt XTR if you're using cordless. Here's setting four. Six hundred and seventy this time, and this short of a test, the closest to that would be well. The other one inch from Milwaukee, the 2867-20, that will take you north of 1000 if you want to go there. The last test we'll be setting for with an HD 12.0 battery, which well could be the moon torque wise, nothing else really compares to that. Just keep in mind that we're going until the end of this four step process or until the press is no longer outputting any extra force to keep things comparable between the tools. Let's get into the testing. Up first we have the best selling Orion Motor Tech from Amazon. Before and after each test, we're going to measure from the press to the ram housing to indicate deflection, or half of that deflection theoretically. With the big bruiser setting set to 1, which is akin to a rigid octane mid-torque with an octane battery, let's see how she does. Remembering to add a zero at the end of this gauge, that peaked at 11,500 pounds of force, and deflection looks to be about nothing. Is that good? Well, we won't know until we have a look at the Harbor Freight Maddox. So here's that. Zeroing out the caliper. That's 14,000 pounds of force. A rigid mid-torque would be able to generate with this tool and about one millimeter of deflection or two millimeters total. That's more bend than the zero we saw with the Orion, but it's also pushing the ball joint with 2,500 pounds more than the Orion here as well. Neither of these tools are close to failing yet, so let's continue. Starting where we left off with the Orion, let's give her 2235 Ti max worth of beans and see how she likes that. That increases force output from 11,500 to 16,350 or so. Now passing where the Maddox left off, but at the cost of bending under load by 1.6 millimeters or about 3.2 total. Let's see the Maddox now. That perked things right up, 26,100 at its peak or so, and if you have a 2235 Ti Max Cobalt High Torque or above, this one seemingly will put out some pounds. Looks like at the cost of 2.8 millimeters here this time, 5.6 millimeters total, 
again more than the Orion but putting out a whole lot more juice in the process with roughly the same input. Let's crank things up to the top setting now with the power similar to a 2867 1 inch on the Orion. Looks like it grew from 16K to 17850 or so. Doesn't seem like a whole lot. Some of that input torque was turned into bending though and it grew to three millimeters or six millimeters total. Here's a Harbor Freight from where it left off. Thirty-five thousand eight hundred pounds from the Maddox. Now fully doubling the Orion Amazon model is putting out with the same settings, and it's now grown to five and a quarter millimeter, or ten point five total in its bending. Though beginning to get a bit worried there. Let's crank things up to eleven with an HD twelve point zero battery, and just kill both of these with whatever is their preferred method of failure. Here's the Orion. So this one only really ever got up to 20, 20,200 or so. It fell from there and we weren't even able to get it ever any higher than that. It grew to 6.3 millimeters or 12 and a half total. So that's where the additional impacting went into really reshaping this tool. Despite doing about half the actual work that the Harbor Freight did, it's well and truly bent for good now. And you'll be able to tell right away when you try to put this thing back into a case. The Maddox is a different yet equally tragic story. You may have noticed our hand movements in the last clip. That's because the force screw took on a whole new shape after that run. It tweaked in a new trajectory. Repeated attempts after this to increase its clamping force, as you see, over test number four did not yield any gains, and it was not able to improve its previous score. The threads looked mostly fine, but was certainly no longer living a straight lifestyle. Here's a recap of how each tool did with their respective runs, and gaps in between to switch power settings and measure deflection. It's not very close when you look at things this way, even though they both sort of met their demise, although we sort of wish they did so in a more dramatic, albeit more life-threatening way, just for entertainment purposes. To try to understand these results, let's take a little deeper look into how they were made and maybe deduce some answers from that. Note these measurements were all taken before the testing. When we're talking simply weight, the Orion MotorTech weighs 6.95 pounds, and the Harbor Freight weighs 6.63. But as you probably have figured out, it's not all about mass based on the performance we've seen. One of these could be made from recycled bottle caps for all we know. When taking a peek at their hardness, we're gonna do so on its spine and four screw locations. We start to get to the core differences here. The Harbor Freight measures 32.3 Rockwell C at the four screw location and 33 to 34 at the spine. Anything around this 30 RC range and above means it's at least made out of some type of perhaps hardenable or forgeable carbon steel like 1045, perhaps something alloyed like 5130 or 5140, but if so in that case, not a very hard version of that. But likely not the top echelon stuff like 4140 chromoly or 6150 chrome vanadium which would normally be in the 40s at least if you're aiming for its peak strength characteristics. The Orion is a, another story altogether. We could not get a reading off of any part of this thing, which means it's under the range of our hardness tester, which usually starts around 18 to 20 or so in our findings. That's the hardness of the steel plate that this tool is resting on, AKA nada, zip. It has a spine like this thing was forged, but if it was forged, it is so out of mild steel or something equally not impressive. You may be thinking, well, that non-impressiveness still had to take on a dang one inch M18 impact, but here's the deflection under stress from a Harbor Freight earthquake impact. Keep in mind, we're doing four to five second runs here. These tools usually see longer in each go and for much more than four times in their life. The Harbor Freight looked tweaked a bit, but otherwise, Still in better shape than OMT. Here's a snapshot of our results and how we'll list these in our next episode where we test the top ball joint press brands from the comment section below. Feel free to leave your suggestion there or suggestions of what other tools you'd like to see us break on a setup like this one.
Since this list includes a whole two presses, we can't really recommend the Maddox until we test more. Who knows, maybe a rusted ball joint really takes 40,000 pounds to press out and this isn't up to the task. Either way, with most high torques and full size impacts on the market, this Maddox shown here in test two will be doing more for you than the Orion MotorTech does maxing out a one inch D handle. All those positive reviewers may not have ruined their tool, but I bet a lot of them mysteriously came up against some super stuck ball joints when in reality, this tool is just soaking up all the impacting work into its soft, creamy center. Subscribe to stay tuned for when this M18 behemoth hits the dyno, and she hits it pretty hard too. Thanks for watching.